Hi, I'm Bonds Magsambal. This is Rappler Talk. As the coronavirus pandemic opens up an entirely new set of challenges for the education system, we're seeing just how important it is to build a more adoptable and more inclusive approach to learning. But should we continue holding online classes at a time when people are struggling to survive? Joining us today is Professor, Ay Professor Ayel Liwanag of the University of the Philippines, Los Baños. Hi Ayel, welcome to Rappler. Magandang araw, boss. Magandang araw sa mga viewers. So, ma'am, kumusta po kayo ngayon? Uh, awa na Diyos. Maayos naman ako at saka yung family ko. I'm with my family right now. Mm -hmm. So, I was able to get out of Los Baños before mm -hmm. the quarantine happened. So, okay mm -hmm. naman kami dito. I'm hearing reports uh, sa mga nangyayari sa LB. So, currently, mm -hmm. ang ginagawa ko dito sa bahay ay mag-monitor ng mga initiatives lalo na especially ng mga organizations ako saan kabilang ako and at the same time ay tumulong sa mga media uh, content mm -mm. Uh, mga panawagan, mga statements and at the same time uh, keep up with yung mga translation works dahil <laughs> yung ako as a linguist So ayun po ma'am So how are the students in UPLB now? Uh, sa ngayon Marami pa rin silang stranded doon. There are around uh, 1,000 students stranded in UPLB, inside and outside the university, to mm -hmm. tinutukon natin. Uh. And uh, sabi, according sa report ng Oplan Hatid, isa sa mga initiatives ng UPLB, meron pang at least 500 students na kinakailangan pang iuwi sa kanilang mga hometown, sa kanilang mga probinsya. So, ma'am, how are the students in UPLB coping with the lockdown? So, ano yung pinagkakaabalahan nila ngayon na stranded sila sa university? Actually, mahirap para sa kanila, lalo na yung ganitong kalagayan. Uh, a lot of them are away from their families. Yung iba ay worried kasi hindi naman consistent yung communication nila dahil hindi naman consistent na may internet sila or may pantex, may load, uh -huh. may iba sa kanila na... Gusto na umuwi, pero syempre, with the quarantine, they cannot do so. Mm -mm. Uh, marami, marami namang initiatives sa uh, ginagawa to keep them preoccupied. May, meron nga actually yung isang uh, FB group, yung LB Lockdown Diaries. Mm -mm. It's, a Facebook, uh, it's a Facebook group kung saan they share ano yung mga pwedeng panoorin, ano yung mga pwedeng basahin, pakinggan, they share kung ano yung mga, mm -mm. kukas ba yung ganitong store. Sarado ba ito? Saan pwedeng bumili nitong gamot na ito? Kasi wala dito. Mga dito. So it's more of a community, an online community where Ganiti. they help each other sa ganito mga uh, klase ng crisis. And mm -mm. most of them, actually, yung mga stranded students din are part of uh, several initiatives na kung saan tumutulong sa kapwa-studyante, pati doon sa mga community sa tabi ng UPLB. Mm -mm. Uh, for example, may mga volunteers tayo, mga student volunteers tayo sa uh, TFQ. It's a task force na binuo ng mga students, ng mga teachers, ng mga civic societies no, para tumulong doon sa community, mga nearby communities sa paghatid, na paghatid ng tulong, pagkain, etc. Mm -hmm. Meron din yung tinatawag na Art Relief uh, Mobile Kitchen. Mm -hmm. So, kung saan parang maramihan yung pagluluto, inihahatid sa iba't ibang communities. Oh. Tumutulong doon yung mga students, yung mga teachers, yung mga faculty, researchers, mga admin staff. Uh, uh, tumutulong sila no, kapag free time nila kasi nga yung iba naman sa kanila, they can do so with sa bahay nila, etc. So ma'am, several schools, including UPLB, have shifted mm -hmm. to online classes during the pandemic. How it has been so far? We did try online classes. Uh, March 12, naglabas sa amin ng memo na nagsasabing uh, we have to revise our syllabi in order to transition from yung face-to-face -face classroom engagement to online classes. And then the allotment dates for the uh, transition are from March 13 to 20 initially. Mm -hmm. And then with March 16, sana magsastart. But then again, no March 17, uh, online classes were suspended until April 14. However, dahil na extent iba yung na extent kasi iba yung ano uh, ECQ. Mm -hmm. So hindi na nakapag-resume din ng online classes hanggang sa the Board of Regents decided to end the semester by April 30. Mm -hmm. So, so parang short-lived lang. 
I see. So, ma'am, ano po yung yung throughout the process? What were the challenges that most is most most students and teachers had encountered? Ano yung mga na-encounter niya challenges while doing the online classes? Um, hindi talaga handa. Both parties, even the administration, the faculty members, the students, we were not ready for this. Hindi kami ready okay. dito. Uh, Nung headcount pa lang ng estudyante, they, they were asking us to shift from face-to-face to online classes. Nung mm-hmm. nag headcount kami online, how many yung mga pag online ng ganito, ano yung, syempre parang we asked our students, parang ilan yung may stable internet connection, ganun. Uh, hindi talaga lahat ng students nakakapag-respond. For example, in my case, uh, combined da, yung three classes ko, I have like 65 students. Pero ang nakapagsagot lang sa akin ng survey ko, and at the same time, yung nakapagsabi na, ma'am, present pa ako dito sa online class, 30 na lang. Mm-mm. So, I, wa- I was wondering before, parang nasa na yung 35 ko? Uh, maraming issues doon, maraming hindrance. Una, sa, kung sa faculty siguro, no, uh, yung walang uh, training, or hindi talaga nakapag-train yung kalakha ng mga teachers para sa ganitong classing setup Mm-mm. and how how they're going to uh, parang how they're going to uh, make use or uh, efficiently use yung online resources para sa isang online class uh, at the same time yung mga devices uh, hindi naman din lahat kasi ng faculty ay one is to one. Maswerte siguro ng mga unit colleges na may one is to one sila na, kunwari one is to one faculty laptop Mm-mm. ratio. Mm-mm. But then again, kung hindi, hindi naman din lahat merong ano, laptop na sarili. Kung may department issued, shared pa sila doon. So parang Mm-mm. how we're going to do that. Uh, same goes with my students, or with our students. Hindi rin naman lahat ay may stable internet connection. May ibang, may, meron pa nga actually akong student na nagsabi sa akin na, ma'am, hindi po ako makakapag-download po kaagad kasi I'm just using mobile data. Okay. Apo. So parang, hindi, ma'am, hindi ko kaya yung mga video, yung mga video presentation, kunwari, or Zoom classes, or mm-hmm. online classes. Ma'am, baka hindi ka kayanin yun kasi mag- kumakain po yun ng mobile data. Maraming ganoong mga concerns. So, ibig sabihin talaga, hindi prepared in terms of resources, uh, knowledge, skills, yung mga tao para sa ganitong classing setup. And Mm-mm. actually, uh, ibang-iba din talaga ang realm ng online classes. Kasi sa isang normal online class, for example, when they handle uh, classes in UP Open University, Mm-mm. ano talaga yun? Kumbaga, nandun yung attitude ng mga tao na it's an online class. So, nandun na yung right attitude na alam nilang ito yung, ito yung magiging setup natin. At mm-hmm. the same time, there are resources. Ready talaga yun. Like, kung wala sila nung online, merong module na pinapadala sa kung saan man silang lugar. At the same time, yung technical support nandoon, etc. Uh, yung ganitong klase, nung in to sa UPLB, hindi talaga ready ang lahat. Kanya-kanya pa yung platform. Some people used... Uh, Edmodo, if you're familiar. Okay, with. yeah. Uh, um, used Schoology, may iba Google Classroom, mm-mm. may iba naman Facebook group. Uh, hindi talaga, kasi nga, ang nangyari, kung saan pinaka-comfortable, probably yung teacher, yung students, o ano yung nakasanayan, ganoon, no? At, dadating sa point na magiging tedious yung task ng pagiging online class. So, how was your experience, ma'am? Uh, can you give us a glimpse on kung paano nyo hinandel yung classes na yun. Like, gaano karaming estudyante yung at the same time yung hinahandle nyo through online? Ano yung uh, class size niya? Yung sa usual ko sa Open University, mm-hmm. I usually handle 60 to 160 students. Depende okay. ko ano yung class size. Uh, most of them vary din yung time uh, difference kasi may iba na nag-aaral from Dubai, Japan, May iba na dito sa Pilipinas, some are working students, etc. But the clear difference between open university kind of online classes and what we tried to do in to UPLB, do. Yeah. totally different yun. Kasi, kumbaga, prepared talaga ang mindset ng teacher 
when it comes to doing our modules, writing our syllabi, giving out handouts, or giving uh, mm-hmm. giving exercises, homeworks, ganun. Iba yung mindset na talagang naiplano mo siya for an online class as opposed to biglaan with the, pand- with the pandemic, biglaan na magpipihit ka ng syllabus mo tapos hindi ready yung materials. No? Or at least you have to look for alternative materials kasi nga hindi available yung ganito online or wala sa estudyante, etc. So ma'am, let's talk about the decision of the University of the Philippines Board of Regents regarding the ending of semester on April 30. What are the pros and cons? Ano yung pwede nating himayin kung ano yung laman nung order na yun na memo? Uh, it's a good thing that the uh, administration ended the classes by April 30. Kasi sa totoo lang talaga, with everything that's going on, with our country, with the world, when it comes to this pandemic, uh, kumbaga parang hindi naman na nasa, hindi, kumbaga hindi naman na nasa top priority ng mga tao na umatend pa ng online classes. No? Uh, It's a good thing na tinapos nga na lang by April 30. The problem is, uh, meron siya parang leeway na one year that the students have, can work for their passing grade for one year. Uh, Doon na siguro na magiging, uh, nagkakaro- magkakaroon ng problema. Doon na rin siguro dumating yung point na bakit maraming tao yung nagka-clamor for mass promotion. Kasi nga, uh, with that one year Uh, palugit up until May 31, 2021, they will have to work for the, their deferred grade. Kasi Mm-mm. automatically, deferred grade muna daw. And then, uh, yung deferred grade mo, either pass, yun yung sa original na BOR, ha, na una nilang pass or drop. But the student has like one year to earn that pass. Or, they can drop the course. The problem with that, kapag pumasok na yung mga susunod na semestre, it's, kumbaga parang papatong yung workload na yun doon sa semestre yun. Kasi definitely by next semester, first semester sa August, on top of their regular workload noon, meron silang tinatrabaho pa na last semester pa dapat nila natapos. Mm-mm. So ma'am, Uh, just today, actually, uh, a few hours ago, UP President mm-hmm. Danilo Concepcion instructs the faculty of the university who have sufficient basis to give their students a grade and adopt a numeric grading system for the current semester. So what does it mean for the UP community? What does it mean for the students now sa UP? Uh, actually, ang um, naging feedback ng mga kalakhan ng mga faculty, it's very divisive. No, uh, magiging divisive siya in a way na hahatiin mo yung faculty and students mo na ready magbigay ng grade, numerical grade at meron naman yung hindi, sa tingin nila hindi ito yung angkop na panahon para magbigay ka ng numerical grade uh, very divisive siya ang punto na dito parang ibinigay na siya sa kada unit kada campus unit yung decision ng magbibigay ba ng numerical or pass with optional grading kung kinakailangan ng bata. So, so ayun ma'am, uh, given na a lot of students are saying that, and then you mentioned din kanina about yung online classes na hindi pa talaga ready. So, a lot of students and teachers are saying na they are ill-prepared and not emotionally ready to do classes during the, po- during the pandemic. So, considering the pandemic may not end anytime soon, uh, yung mga projections ng mga scientists, mathematicians, na it, mm. it may last until 2021 if no intervention is being done. So, things like that. And then, siguro yung question dito is, should the, uh, should the universities and colleges continue holding classes, even online, at the time na may pandemic tayo? Kasi, uh, ano dito eh, parang yung mga studyante kasi, parang, Ad, nag a pa sa kanila ng burden yun. And then yung anxiety nila, nagtitrigger yun ng anxiety nila. Given na like, for example, there are parents na nawalan ng trabaho, who have lost livelihood because of the lockdown. 
So, yung nagiging dilemma nila is, a-attend pa ba ako ng classes? Eh, namung problema na nga kami kung saan kami kakain every day. Right? Okay. And then, for example, may mga uh, pamilya din or may mga estudyante na yung pamilya nila is na-diagnose with COVID. A-attend pa ba sila ng klase na nag-worry sila kung makakasurvive yung family member nila sa COVID? So, things like that. Should we prioritize by education over health and safety at this time? Of course, at this time, ang priority mo talaga ay health and safety Mm-mm. ng mga tao. Uh, sa puntong ito, hindi naman na dapat pinagdedebatehan kung itutuloy pa dapat o hindi. Uh, balikan natin yung online classes ng UPLB and how it, parang kumbaga pa paano ito nag-transpire. Eventually, Mm-mm. not off din nila to or sinaspend din nila yung online classes due to a lot of technical reasons. And then, kung ipipilit natin, push through natin itong online classes with the current situation that we have and the span of time na maaari pang madagdag just to curve or flatten diba, uh, the pandemic, uh, magiging problematic yung online classes para lang i-continue mo yung, uh, i-continue mo yung uh, semestre. No? Kasi... Kung titingnan mo din naman, hindi hindi pantay-pantay ang mga estudyante natin, hindi rin pantay-pantay ang mga faculty members natin. Kung mas maswerte, it's a privilege if you have stable internet connection, it's a privilege if you have um pagkain, if you have food on your table every day, three times a day, uh, it's a privilege, no? Privilege 'yun kasi hindi lahat ng tao ganoon, hindi rin lahat ng families ganoon. No, so uh, dagdag pa doon, of course, the anxiety of the students, lalo na doon coming from those families na hindi naman talaga stable yung jobs ng parents sila or walang pumapasok nga na income tulad ng sinabi mo. Uh, dagdag din sa anxiety ng mga na-stranded pa ngayon whether they should come home or not kasi para ano ba to, tutuloy pa ba yung semestre next sem, mag-mid-year? classes pa ba ako para, para mahabol ko yung ganito graduation etc. Nandun ka sa uncertainty eh. Kung uuwi na ba ako magkapahatid na ba ako via offline hatid o hindi. Uh, maraming ganoon. So I think at this point at this point the administrations in education sector should be very decisive sa mga ganitong klaseng mga problems or issues. They have to be decisive kasi Uh, yung ganitong klase na oh, bahala na no, pagpa, pagpa ano natin to sa kada unit or it causes anxiety for a lot of people it will cause anxiety definitely so ma'am balikan naman natin since nag, uh, mag-e-end na yung semester sa UP by April 30 mm-hmm. then several students have long called for mass promotion So, what is your stand on this? Pero siguro before that, let's explain muna to our viewers what does mass promotion mean? Uh, ang wrong notion no? or an incorrect notion ng mass promotion ay yung ipapasa na lang lahat. Kesyo, di pumasok yan, hindi. Kaya marami ding umaalma na, eh, parang ginagamit niyo itong pandemic to mass promote everyone. It's like dole out. Uh, yung mass promotion it means that nobody's left behind. Uh, it will not look like a dole out if uh, the idea here is to help the students learn. Bakit nga ba tayo nag-aaral? Bakit tayo pumapasok sa klase para matuto? Ngayon, uh, with what's going on, a good bridge program mm-hmm. should be uh, crafted or created by the unit, by the, by the institution. Kasi ang um, kung ikaw ay isang educator, you know that learning is not is not time bound. Hindi mo siya maiisasara sa ganito na dapat matutunan mo siya ganyan. Uh, sa ganitong panahon, sa ganyan. Uh, it's not time bound. And uh, what you can do is to prepare the students. So for example, if you have a higher course, tapos ngayon ipinasakot ng estudyante to, kasi ang worry kasi nila tiba with the yung next course parang paano siya makaka-cope dun sa next course eh hindi niya nakuha yung basic foundation ng or yung foundation dun sa previous course dun namang dun nam um, makikita yung lakas 
or gano'n ang preaching program. Paano mo ngayon tutulungan, magsa-scaffolding ka as a teacher, no? Na para maturo mo yung goal mo sa sa subject na yun, pero at the same time, tinutulungan mo siya doon sa mga, nakul- mga kula, mga deficiencies niya doon sa previous course niya. Ngayon, kung may magandang bridge program ka naman, it's not really a dole out degree. It's not mm-hmm. really a dole out mm-hmm. u- number of units. Kasi nga, ang point mo naman dito, you want the students to learn, not just earn a grade. There's a difference between learning and earn- earning a grade. Yun. Yeah. So yun, uh so kayo ma'am, should mm-hmm. should we freeze the education, the classes for now during the pandemic? What's your stand on this? Of course, ang sa akin, the top priority would be uh to help curve or flatten the number of cases of COVID here in the Philippines. And at the same time, uh una not necessarily kinakailangan mo ng isang formal class. Kasi pwede naman na it can be a remote class. When you say remote class, kumbaga, you have the resources with you. You study it at your own pacing. Kung hindi ngayon, dahil wala naman kami, maybe some time in the future kapag may internet na ako, habulin ko siya. Kaya noon. Uh-huh. At the same time, uh, Mahalaga din yung pag-seize muna ng uh, mga classes kasi kalakhan din naman ng mga students natin ngayon, faculty members, for example, sa UPLB, ha, a lot of them are uh, volunteer workers din. Okay. So parang, sabi nga nung isang kapakulti ko, parang, paproblemahin ko pa ba yung grades sa mga sudyante ko? Eh, I'm here working on something. Mm-hmm. Dahil tumutulong ako sa community ko. Not just in LB, but in their respective communities. Lalo na yung mga na-lockdown sa iba ng komunidad nila. Tumutulong talaga yan sa mga barangay nila, sa mga communities nila. So, I think wala namang masama na i-freeze. Kasi definitely, pag, uh, pag natapos naman ang lahat ng ito, hopefully soon, we can uh, resume to the usual setup ng classes natin. Pero at this moment, para hindi siya feasible and hindi siya priority or top priority talaga. So, uh, several experts or several, uh, 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 what do you call this, uh, parang yung mga uh, academic institutions dito sa Pilipinas, parang they're proposing the shift to online learning. So, na-enumerate natin kanina kung ano yung mga challenges na na-encounter nyo firsthand with the online learning. So, if hindi tayo pabor dito, what do you think are, are the alternatives to online learning? Uh, ayun na nga yung sitawag na remote, uh, remote classes. Okay. Ibig sabihin, uh, malaking, malaking parte dito ang institution mismo, ang government sa remote classes. Kasi ibig sabihin nito, uh, magpapatuloy yung pag, uh, pagkatuto, pero hindi na siya doon sa rigid na naisip natin na apat na... Uh, corners ng classroom or di kaya ng online. Uh, may mga bansa na gumagamit sila ng mass media para sa education. Kasi iyon yung medyo mas kubaga reachable sa mga estudyante, sa mga kabataan. Radyo, napakalaking factor nito. Uh, halimbawa, sa atin, uh, nung tatawag ng mga remote classes, sineskwela, mga ganoon, na kung saan, uh, Ibig sabihin, hindi na lang ito usapin na mga educational institutions. It will be a topic, an issue to be addressed by not just the educational sector, but also other uh, institutions, mass media, and other uh, civic organizations. So, uh, if ma'am nabalitaan nyo, parang di ba yung mga UP experts, parang they, they're suggesting na isuspend yung classes until December 2020. Mm-hmm. So, kasi parang sinasabi nila na majority daw ng population is young. So, parang mm-hmm. sinasabi nila na mas prone daw na maka-interact sa mga elderly. So, si- sinasabi nila to contain the spread of the virus, isuspend na muna yung klase hanggang December 2020. What is your stand on this? Uh, no mga uh, up until UP, uh, December 2020? Yeah, yun po yung proposal mm-hmm. ng UP experts. I think nothing wrong with that, no? Na i-postpone muna yung classes or suspend the classes until December 2020. But, 
uh, kailangan dito ng blanket approval, lalo na pagdating sa mga kawani natin, faculty members at yung sahod nila. No? Lalo na sa mga pri- private institutions. Mm-hmm. I think that will be an issue. So, kasi without students nga daw, with suspension of classes, parang paano nila pasatahurin yung mga faculty members sila, ganoon. Uh, as for the suspension of classes, pwede naman yun na informal learning along the way, informal education no, through mass media. Kaya napakalaking papel dito na mass media. Eh. Parang how are you going to instill learning? And at the same time, hindi magkaroon ng stagnation sa so education aspect. Pero accessible siya sa karamihan ng mga Pilipinos. I think you, ha- you have to consider here yung nasa pinakamababang sektor ng lipunan mo, ng society mo. Kasi sila, sya- kung baga sila yung benchmark mo, kung ano yung magiging device mo na plano, na pinaka-accessible siya even doon sa poorest of the poor natin. Mm-mm. So ma'am, uh, yun, nabanggit natin kanina na magsasuffer dito if we suspend the classes until December 2020, mas magsasuffer yung mga private institutions. So, mm-hmm. uh, especially yung mga professors or teachers, instructors who may not be receive ample pay during the lockdown. So, how do you think should this be remedied to ensure that the teachers still receive their salaries or other forms of financial aid? Of course, the government should have the blanket, at least a security blanket for these people for these faculty members lalo na sa ganitong klase ng uh, pandemic kasi hindi naman nila kasalanan na wala silang ituturo eh or wala silang tuturuan so the government should they should be plan uh, they should be part of the plan ng government mm-hmm. lalo na sa paano sila tutuwangan sa ganitong klase ng mga uh, ganitong klase ng mga kondisyon of course it's better if they're own private institutions will be able to lend help to them. So we'll be able to give uh, at least yung security blanket when it comes to finances. Diba? But the def- definitely the government should also intervene on this part. Kasi medyo malaking number of, uh, malaking number of uh, labor workforce din natin to. So speaking of the government, So let's go with how do you think the government is responding to the coronavirus pandemic? It's a good, may mga magagandang bagay naman like may mga initiatives talaga yung mga frontliners natin in different public institutions like for example UPPGH uh isa yan sa mga frontliners talaga natin ngayon sa pandemic na ito but of course there are sentiments that medyo mabagal talaga ang government natin when it comes to responding to this uh epidemic or pandemic uh, compared to the other countries like for example Russia uh, Russia sorry uh, Korea South Korea and Vietnam na ang bilis talaga ng response ng government nila so they were able to flatten or curve the number of cases that they have in their countries you know? sa atin ngayon kasi ang problem hindi mo alam kung totoo pa yung number game kasi walang mass testing as opposed to these countries like for example South Korea very very assertive talaga sila very active sila when it comes to mass testing no kahit PUI ka lang kahit napadaan ka lang do sa street kung saan dumaan yung uh, PUM or uh, COVID positive nila for testing ka na kaagad so um, doon mo makikita yung difference ng response na uh, responses ng mga governments natin with this COVID-19 Mm-mm. As so, uh, as for the edu edu sector naman, mm-mm. ganun din. <laughs> Actually, uh mabagal and at the same time magulo. Like for example, nga sa UP, lumabas itong VOR guidelines sa to and then man, uh maraming lumabas na mga informal papers or kuro-kuro tapos biglang lumabas na naman tong panibagong guideline na medyo iba doon sa BOR guidelines. So, magulo, mabagal. Mm-mm. So, ma'am, to wrap up our discussion, to wrap up our discussion now, so what is your message to the students and teachers now? To the students, of course, ang 
advice ko lang naman, ang pagkatuto, learning is not just about grades. Hindi yan nakapako sa uh, grado. Uh, itong nangyayari sa bansa natin ngayon, it's, it's a uh, situation we're in can learn a lot of things. You know? Practical man yan, malayo man yan, o hindi, sa field mo. Mm-mm. Marami ka mat- and with this uh, situation right now. Uh, at the same time, to the faculty members, of course, yung misconception ng uh, mass promotion, it's not really a dole. Uh, at the end of the day naman, what we want to achieve is for our students. Uh, hindi nga lang siya time-bound at this, at, at this point in time. So, uh, at, the, at this point, of course, I encourage the faculty members to... Uh, uh, promote mass promotion to uh, kumbaga I at this point in time I let go muna yung honor and excellence na nakatali sa grado uh, and focus more on how we're going to help our students our communities our fellow Fil- Filipino so sabi nga nila education with compassion muna tayo no? precisely Precisely, Bonds. So, if you just tune in, we've been talking to Professor Ayeli Wanag of the University of the Philippines, Los Banos. Let's keep the conversation going. Should the universities and colleges continue holding online classes during the coronavirus pandemic? Tweet us using hashtag GrapplerTalk. Again, I'm Bonds Magsambol. Thanks for tuning in.